Um, this is Keith from Blur.bz. Uh, I hope this isn't too grainy. I'm at 800 ISO on a Nikon D5300, which is great for video. Um, so this video is about the $75 I spent that, is, uh, that has made the greatest improvement in my studio photography uh, compared to anything else I've done. Um, the problem with studio photography is you don't want to, you know, you watch a YouTube video of how somebody does something one light, two light, three light, and that's great, but you really want to experiment. And experimentation takes, um, takes a subject. And if you're shooting a person, there's no real substitution for something like a person. Uh, I made the mistake of the first couple of times trying out studio photography, shooting my wife, who's a very beautiful woman, and I made her less beautiful than she actually is. And that is not a good idea to do. So here's what I spent $75 on. Amazon Prime, uh, I'll make a link to this, there's many, there's many of these. This one's, I think this one's pretty good. Some of them have some movement, some of them don't. This one, the arms move, the head moves, comes off. Um, came with a wig, it's got these seams in the arms, very big seams and shoulders, seam on one leg, seam across the belly. But uh, in terms of skin, Skin is fairly even, the face has a slightly different hue. But, um, so not only did this help with my lighting, it helped with my post-production because I've kind of become a master of post-production from all this too. So let's do a quick shoot. Um, and I think the takeaway is after about 15 hours of, of just experimenting and doing this, I'd be happy. If somebody walked in the door, I could shoot them. Uh, that's, that sounds bad. If somebody walked in the door, I could do a studio shoot with them with complete confidence. Uh, three days ago, I could have come up with good results, but I would have been floundering around. It would have been very theoretical, working things out um, as I go. So, I'm shooting with Young Now flashes. I really love the YM560s and this little sender that comes with them. Love them. So, uh, I also love these, which I'd never seen before. That's awesome. All the convenience of an umbrella, but a lot of the qualities of a light box. I hate light boxes. I have two light boxes. One of them takes up half of my basement. Um, umbrellas have a little bit less control than this. I like umbrellas. I play around with umbrellas for about the first three or four hours. But these I really like, so let's have one flash of that. Very close. Flash is off, so I'm shooting at f5.6, 250th, ISO 200. I'm not capturing anything under ambient light. So, turn that on. I've got three flashes in the room. I'm going to turn two of them off and just start with this one. Another thing I've been practicing because of all, because of this, is how to use a light meter, which I highly recommend. Um, histograms great, previews great. Nothing. Not since I started using this, I haven't had one disappointing like, oh, that is not the exposure I thought it was when I when I actually downloaded. It. So let's take a reading here. Set that to the same settings. This is an old Minolta. Minolta was bought by that company beginning with S. So this is old, but it's the same. It's awesome. It's a little bit too much there. Actually cool. We might play with that. It's super blue. Why is that? My white balance is on f incandescent. That looked awesome. 
but let's put it on flash. Might come back to that. Bang on, absolutely perfect. So let's add a snooted flash, pointing to the back of her head, up slightly. A little bit of, oh, switch it on, I guess. So that is what flash is that. Let's put that at 64. Just add a little bit of haloing, a little bit of, yeah, that looks great. And let's get that reflector back in that I used a second ago. a little bit of that light back on this side of the face. Yeah, that's good. I know it's too big. I bought the big one. I know. It's too big. It's totally, totally too big. Here. Actually, let's take one zoom from here. Get a really nice compression on the face. Oh, uh, why am I only hearing one flash? Better. I'm losing battery there. Okay, let's do one more fun thing. You know what? That blue. Let's do. Another flash, just off to one side. Put that. This is what I love. Just I mean, you can experiment like this all day long, and there's nobody to see you make mistakes, apart from everybody on YouTube. Um, put that at half power. Shoot across it with it in frame. Power. That's awesome. Actually, that's sorry. So my goal here is to take shops and do post processing, so that people don't realize this is a seventy-five dollar. I've already got the best thing I get. Yeah, there we go. And then, of course, I could. Fuse one there. Background is a little bit too far away. I think it'd blow out with one strobe. Let's see.
It's getting there. It's not white, but it's getting there. the main light up a touch. Stop. Take one more shot. Do something with that. Okay. So that was, how long was that? Eight minutes. There's no way three days ago I could have done anything of any usefulness in eight minutes. That's why I think this is the best $75 I've spent on my studio photography. So here we are. While I didn't say I was good at video, that video was definitely pretty grainy. Um, but I didn't want to add too much extra light, uh, too much extra ambient light. Um, so here we are. I'm uh, a Linux user. This is Ubuntu. I'm using Darktable, which is an open source product. Quite like Lightroom in a way, but in some ways more powerful, in some ways it does a lot of things that you would have to go to Photoshop for, which I'll show you. Um, it's also available for Mac from um, darktable.org. So any flavor of Linux and Mac. Um, everything I use here is Linux, so I'm scrolling around. This is Ubuntu Linux. Um, here's the... I'm recording this screencast with simple screen recorder. Uh, I'm making the video with something called K-D-E-N-L-I-V-E, K-D-E-N Live, uh, which has made it very easy to just uh, take one more shot. Overlayer those photos on the way earlier, so it's all very straightforward. Um, I'm pretty much a Linux advocate. I don't mind spending money on software, but um, I switched to Linux in 2006 because Windows was driving me nuts, but I had Windows hardware. Um, I've tried Mac. I like Mac, but I install Linux on my MacBook Pro, too, because this is just how I roll. So here are these photos. We have 25 photos. Uh, test shot, the strange white balance shot, a couple of fails. We've got a flash didn't fire there, flash didn't fire there. Um, but pretty usable, I mean that. That's light meters are good. That is that is a good exposure. Um, you can see the difference here if you look at the hand. So this was the first photo. Then you can see the snoot brought in the snooted flash behind brought in this nice halo on the hair. And you see that hair is that hand is dark. The reflector really lightened up that hand there we go so just made the side a little bit more even so all in all for a very short length of time uh, there are not a whole lot of duds there so here's how I work I think it's the same in Lightroom you can you can have stars and things for you can you can assign a number of stars to an image what I do is I start off everything's imported and it has one star and then I go through and anything I actually want to edit I will make a two star and it disappears from this view. Let's work on that one too. Uh, maybe we'll work on one of these, maybe. Uh, these are pretty experimental, but again, that's the beauty of not having a person standing around. I could probably do something with that, like do a, some kind of a sunset simulation or something, I don't know. 
Um, but I do really like, where is it? I really do like that one. So let's move that. Uh, last shot, I I increased the main light to stop and it's blown out that the details in the hair there. So I think this is the best of those white background ones. So there I've clicked I think five of them. I've made two star, then I go up and change the filter two star and there are those ones. So that's the workflow. And typically I'll not use the mouse to do that. I'll use the number keys. So my left hand is sitting on the number keys. I might go, say I've got a massive shoot. Say I've got 200 shots. I'm just flicking through with the mouse uh, and anything I like, I'm just hitting the number two, hitting the number two. Then I'll go through each of those, look at them in a, a bit closer, maybe do a crop. Uh, if I like what I get, then I'll move it to a three. Then I'll do a deep edit move it to a four and then if I really want it if it's a real keeper I'll move it to a five so in that way you can always move things up and down if something I have as a three I kind of look at and think no I don't like this at all I can just uh, take it back down to a two so let's start off with let's start off with this so what are we gonna do with this let's take down Shadows. So the thing about uh, the thing about Darktable is it's built by a group of people. There are many ways that you can do the same thing. So I can control shadows here. I can control blacks and exposure, and I can even control uh, blacks and grays and everything. And there's a there's there's many ways to do exactly the same thing. It's very powerful. So I think everybody has their own way of doing things. I'm going to take that black down. Uh, like I said, see the hue on the face is slightly, there's a slight green there. I'm just going to take saturation down a little bit and even that out. And here's actually, here's something we can do. Take it down a little more. Here's how dark table is kind of a merge between Photoshop and um, Lightroom. I can now do a mask. I could do a, I could draw a mask. I could do a gradated mask. I, or I can just select an area just to apply that change to. So I'll be doing that. That saturation change has only affected that mask. So I've now, I think, more matched the face color to the body color. I'm going to warm the whole thing up a bit with this color correction. Do I want a blue? Ooh, do I like that? Maybe. That's the shadows. Do I like the shadows a little bit more blue? No, let's just leave it black. Um, so we've definitely got, just for the sake of demonstrating the tool, let's up the exposure a little bit there. But Let's do this. And I'm going to create a gradient. And I'm only going to do that exposure change to come on, what am I trying to select here? There we go. Just going to raise the exposure down the skin here just balances out a little bit so if I raise that exposure a little bit I don't know if I like that or not I know I don't like it I'm bringing in this too what I could do is I could mask the legs and just increase the exposure in the legs but I'm not gonna do it I don't think we need to I think that's okay um, maybe crop a little bit So there's a bunch more could be done there. Like it might be, let's do a different one, black and white, but let's just leave it at that. So I'm gonna upgrade that to a three. It disappears and loads my next one. Okay, what do we do with this? 
what's going on with the levels. I feel like we've got some space at the bottom. Yeah. Um. What about if we just impact? gonna take some work. What about black and white? Oh, my camera spotted somebody outside and I heard something hit the dirt, so Amazon's been here again. New toys. What's this like black and white? Sometimes I like as well to put, um, to rather be pure black and white, to put a tiny tint. So as you can see, it's a pretty powerful tool. I kind of like that. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Um, I might put some more time into these and and post them in the bottom of the blog post on Blur.pz, but I'm just gonna screw them through them for now because I wanna take them into GIMP, our Linux Photoshop equivalent. Um, to, because I want to get rid of all these seams and all these imperfections. It's been really, I hadn't really done a lot of that and having done a bunch of the stuff, I definitely have got it down pretty quickly now. So... like to get those white that background whiter so I'm gonna do that this so this tool is really kind of cool it can it's dealing with the darks it's dealing with the lights so it's just affecting the histogram in various ways but this middle slider is also very interesting it's moving where the average gray is or something like that so you can get super stylized shots like look at that that's i like that it's super stylized it's not what i'm going for here though what i'm going for here is just to move the slider until i make my white background a little bit whiter without blowing out the features too much yeah i can deal with that let's go black and white on this one black and white up the contrast. Um, the local contrast to be sharpen a little. Mm, yeah, I might come back to it. one more so this one actually let's just leave it the way it is uh, let's just take that green out of the 
face a little bit. There's various ways I could probably just undo the green. Let's try that. Um, take the saturation just out of the green. Is that going to work? No, not really. Masking is really powerful. So yeah, so that's evened it now. Maybe even too much. Gonna bring that back up. So it's all the same. And then I'm going to change it in a group. So let's just leave it like that. Uh, let's be done with that for now. So let's export those three four and see what we can do with them if I go to back to light table there's my four select them all export and I'm just setting a web setting and they are gonna end up in here along with the ones I exported just as they were to include in the video so let's do let's do a couple of things. Let's let's take this and open oh, with GIMP. So GIMP is our Photoshop. GIMP is Linux Photoshop. So very similar in terms of tools. So if we take the healing tool, control, shift, click. So I hadn't done a lot of this kind of level of stuff before I was doing it for this purpose, but again, it's a good skill. Now if I actually did a shoot, I think I'd be pretty good at um, removing any blemishes that need to be removed. And I'm going to make the brush big, not that big. Again, I'm not going to try and make this perfect right now. Uh, clone. That's good enough for now. Stray hairs, highlights. Either with heal or clone. Yeah. So let's leave that one for now. Keep going. What's that spec? She's got dandruff. that lens flare thing going on. Let's get rid of that too.
cool. I even like the way the lips went from the color change we did on that blue. I like that. Okay, let's overwrite that. Save the GIMP file. What's next? Um, I pulled that one. Well, that one I would just be doing the same thing, so I'm not going to put any time into that on the video. Let's do this, though. Where's the one that's just the face? Where's the close-up of the face? I'm looking for a 01 file name. Did I not export them all? That's the one I'm looking for. So, yeah, I've got it twice now. So, like I said, I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to spending money on software. This Portrait Pro popped up on a Facebook ad the other day, and I worked out how to install it on Ubuntu using Wine. And if you're a Ubuntu person, check out blur.bz, uh, and it shows you how to install that and run it on Ubuntu without problems, although hope there are no problems today because that would suck wouldn't it so basically this product recognizes a face usually recognizes it if it's weird if it has glasses on or if it's a certain angle sometimes it doesn't you have to help it find things the more accurate these settings these positions are the better the result will be um, but it's uh, it's a pretty good tool. Like I've I've got a subtle setting on it that I use on real people that just just makes things a little bit better. But just for fun, let's go through this one. So that's unchanged by it. Um, let's that's just a generic sculpt face thing but you can individually change each setting or you can do them all at once. So let's make the lips a little bit. Uh, what, I, what I actually like this for is the makeup here. Um, the makeup controls, because this is pretty cruddy paint. Um, like if I add in some upper eyeshadow a bit of lipstick starting to get a little bit more realism uh, doesn't add to it takes away less is more definitely less is more I don't put makeup on myself so I don't know what highlighters and bronzers are so I just kind of make it up as I go along. But it's just a, you, the usual play with sliders, see what happens. You can add contact lenses, but it's not. It doesn't look great. Um, you can, which is nice. If you take a normal photo, see we have the light box here. Uh, that really, really pops. So you can add, you can add reflections you can remove, I could remove that reflection with this tool, or I could add in a simulated octagon box or a simulated circle, which is cool. So that's all I'm going to do there. Uh, ooh, darker pupil. What's that? Our eye isn't very good here. Maybe her eye isn't very good. It looks messed up. I don't know if that's maybe the paint on the mannequin. Could be. Um, but that's a little bit more realistic. So then I would say that. Gives it a slightly different file name.
take that into GIMP. Do the same thing with the arms. Um, what else? I'm going to do anything else while you're here. No, but I'll, I'll Photoshop these to a point that I really like them. I'll spend a bit more time on them and point the, and post them in the blog post of Blur.bz. Uh, and that's about it. I mean, it's like I said, it's why spend $75? Because if you spend 70, if you, if you buy one of these things, it, it makes it much easier to simulate a shoot. I mean, the hair and the skin makes it much easier uh, even the things I learned before I was trying to use a, um, a, a kind of just a head size thing, but I've learned about the difference between lighting a full body and lighting a partial body, and I've done three light setups and two light setups, and reflector setups and umbrella setups, um, uh, and it's just it's just absolute fact. There is there is no way that I could have three days ago created the lighting results that I'm creating here and $75 best money I've ever spent. That's all I got to say. Take care. So here's where I ended up actually. Uh, that one I don't think I changed very much at all. That one I don't really like but um, I like parts of it. I like the contrast maybe if it was more cropped. I like the contrast and the clothes it's not my favorite that's just there because of the portrait pro stuff that I did I think it's reasonable that I like as a stylized I don't know stylized sunglasses commercial I, don't know, I like that I, I like that one a lot uh, like that one a lot definitely the sunglasses make the mannequin look a little bit more lifelike but that's the end of the video. Um, go buy one. Have fun. Bye.